or to access other counties from this county. So I think it's a good idea uh, for the economic development of Wood County and uh, just ask for your support of it. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Other public comment? Going twice. <clears throat> Other public comment? Can I just ask by a quick show of hands how many people are here for that on in regard to that issue? A fair number of those. Uh, is there any objection to me pulling that to the front of the packet to deal with that issue? Prior to continuing the meeting? Okay, I see no objection. So we're going to go to page 176 in the packet. Page 141 is an explanation of what they're talking about. I know the committee looked at this this morning. It's been in the supervisor's packet. The resolution in itself is on page 176. I would ask the clerk to please read the resolution. This will be resolution 13-3-1 to encourage the highway, parks and forestry, and planning and zoning departments to work together to improve the ATV, UTV trail route system in Wood County. Fiscal note, nothing direct. Recreational development promotes economic development as well as the well-being of the residents of the county. Thank you. I have a motion by Kramer and a second by Fisher that opens this up for discussion. Is there any discussion on this issue? Supervisor Henkel first, then I'll go to Kramer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to clarify that this resolution asks those three departments to work together to come up with a recommendation, and that may be a process that would take a while because it would probably start with an inventory of what exists and what is not actually a trail or a route, and then work together to make recommendations. So it's not going to be next month that we're going to see changes if this resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of that. This um, I've got correspondence from District 8 that date back to January 2nd of 2013 when this uh, process was initiated and started. Uh, I think it's a, a great example of getting this to the county board for today to bring the stakeholders to the table. That is the purpose of this resolution to get the stakeholders to the table. I agree with um, Supervisor Hinkle that it's going to take time. I, this is not something that should be rushed and many times the first answer is not the right answer. When we look at our southern neighbors and our western neighbors, uh, Juno, Adams, Jackson, and Clark all have a trail system and simply the purpose of this resolution is to hook to that trail system uh, by virtue of the municipalities and townships that have had these uh, ordinances in place. Uh, there's many economic reasons, uh, as in the resolution of seven to nine million, uh, but economic impact from the 2015 study in Jackson County, I'm not standing here saying those will transfer directly over, but certainly an economic impact. When you look at District 8 specifically, there are many uh, businesses, uh, rural uh, grocery stores, gas stations, restaurants that this could be the difference between them staying in business or not. This is your own impact, uh, especially since our snowmobile season has been uh, significantly shrank in the last few years. Uh, when you look at the uh, the other side of this is that we've always looked at opportunities to get people into the outdoors to recreate. This is just another opportunity to allow people to recreate, and I think the county should uh, work on the side of being an enabler, not an inhibitor. Right now we are inhibiting this, and I think we need to get the power back to the local governments, our local elected officials, and uh, honor their request to uh, open this and connect this. So I, I'm very supportive of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, two things. I disagree with my esteemed colleague from the 8th District. Uh, the county is not inhibiting this. Uh, the HERC committee spent some time discussing this in conjunction with the Highway Commissioner, um, and we just at that time did not pursue this issue. I don't rise in favor, nor am I opposed at this time. But the only thing I really have is whenever you start talking about a fiscal note and then you say nothing direct, um, it makes me think what's indirect that might cost the county. And if this moves forward, we're going to have to make sure that we have shared uh, uh, covering the expenses for making this go through. Thank you. Further discussion? Supervisor Klein, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I like Supervisor Zerplu. Uh, I'm not for this or against it, but, but it has come to the town of Grand Rapids. And, and the big thing is, is the route. We don't have any trails coming to the town to connect it to a route. And besides that, I, I have a terrible cold, and I got some guys behind me that I went to school with, and they bullied me in high school, so I got to watch what I say. <laughs> and uh, I, I say if Jackson County, if Jackson County has this, why are we depending upon theirs? Are, are we going to be doing a study also to see if it's economic development? I, I would really like to see this, just to clarify it for the, like the city of Wisconsin Rapids, any city, that if you live on a street with a 25 mile speed zone, that you can get up in your ATV and go to a trail because that's, the speed limit is 35 miles an hour. It's limited to ATVs. I'm just wondering if, if that's what this effect is. Is it, is, is it going to allow people in cities and exclusive subdivisions in some of the towns to, to actually, because their speed limit is the right speed limit, that they'll be able to go in their garage, get their ATVs out, and go to a trail? So I, I think it just needs some studying, and I, I, I'm voting for the resolution because I think it's going to do this, and I, and I hope they do do a proper study. Thank you. For the discussion? Any further discussion? All right, we've done. I would ask you to please vote. <coughs> Dennis, you're not in yet. <coughs> that resolution passed 18-1, 18-1. So when we get there, that's where I'm related, but that took care of pages 141 through 176 of the packet. <laughs> All right, when we go back to the packet, uh, we didn't have any acknowledgments or recognitions. I don't know if I mentioned that before. We have no special orders of business today, and then that will get us into the packet in order. Uh, page 7, referrals for March uh, to the county board, and those were sent out to the appropriate committee chairs. Page 8, the executive committee meeting minutes of Tuesday, March 6th, on page 8, 9, 10, and 11. The executive committee subcommittee uh, to interview human resource director applicants. That meeting was Thursday, March 1st, and that was on page 12. The ad hoc property committee minutes of Thursday, March 1st, on 13 and 14. The wellness board meeting on 15 and 16. Comments from the county clerk on 17. <coughs> from maintenance on 18 and 19. Safety and risk management, 20. The treasurer's report on 21 and 22. Information technology on 23. Four and five. Report from the finance director beginning on page 26 and going through page 33. So I'll give you a chance to see if you made any notes there or had any questions. 26 through 33. Page 34 and 35 is the CIP uh, improvement plan worksheet. Just a draft of those 34 and 35. Pages 36, 7, 8, and 9 is a position description for an accounts payable administrator, and that's 36 through 39. Pages 40 through 53, financial statements, balance sheets, financial statements, income and expenses, 40 through 53. Looking around, I don't see any heads on anything there. Monthly letter of comments from the Human Resources Department on 55, 6, 7, and 8. 55, 6, 7, and 8. You want to do an introduction there, Ed? Since we have a new director on board. You want to do an introduction since we have a new director on board? You know, um, the Resources Department. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> but. I thought that if we have not introduced Kim, can we just stand up, please? We, we 
we have confirmed the uh, appointment of Kim McGrath to full-time full -time director of human resources. Uh, we got, I think, eight applications for the job. Uh, Kim's uh, qualifications were outstanding, head and shoulders above the rest. Uh, we're very pleased to have her on board. I've had the opportunity to work with her in the past couple of months. Uh, she is very diligent, very thorough, and I think Wood County is something well served by her tenure. Kim, welcome to the board, and uh, I'm sorry I won't be here to work with you. <laughs> Fiscal note, no cost to Wood County, the adjustment to the budget totals $75,116. Motion by Supervisor Flew, second by Hamilton. Discussion? Any discussion? Supervisor Wedge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, is this going to affect our rent or maintenance fund at all? You know, this came out of the general back into the maintenance fund? Supervisor Wagner? <laughs> no, no, sir. This, this was money that um, uh, was not anticipated. Uh, there were additional revenues received that weren't accounted for in the budget, so they were put all into the general fund, and they added to the general fund. And then basically we just transferred them over to the maintenance department to cover the anticipated cost. So we're still with a net gain of some, I forget what the, well, I should ask you Heather what the exact amount is, but I believe it's still over $100,000 net gain in the general fund. And Heather, can you answer that first, Supervisor Wendt? <laughs> so, um, can you go to the microphone? Thank you. <laughs> so, um, as you saw in my treasurer's, treasurer's report, you'll see, see that I'm still returning $190,874.14 to the general fund. Of that, I'm asking to pull that seventy six. Um, in the resolution. So it's, so it's roughly $120,000 in addition to the general fund. <coughs> okay. And this was all above and beyond what my anticipated estimated costs were. Okay, further discussion? Any further discussion? I would ask you to please vote. <coughs> That resolution passed 17-2, 17-2. Give Trent a chance to catch up here. And then we're going to go to the page 60 in your packet, which is another resolution, another budget. On that this will be resolution 18-3-3, to amend the 2017 budget for the Human Services Norwood Health Center programs for a transfer of available appropriations to functions where actual expenditures were, are recorded. Fiscal note, no additional cost to Wood County. The additional appropriations needed for transfer are available and are not anticipated to be spent in the appropriations to be transferred out. The adjustment to the budget totals 103,000. Okay, per the reading of the resolution, I have a motion by Hamilton, second by Leighton. Discussion on this resolution. Any discussion? Any discussion? Please vote. That resolution passed unanimously, 19 0. <laughs> Page 61, third resolution in your packet, a form like this the way we handle them today, uh, from the Executive Committee. This will be resolution 18-3-4. To have the Wood County Board of Supervisors go on record in support of requesting state law change, allowing counties to use the use of the design build construction method and update the statutory bidding requirements. Fiscal note, no appropriations or funds are necessary for this resolution. Motion by Clendenning, second by Fire. Any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion? Please vote.
that resolution passed 19-0. Page 62. We're continuing with the resolution. This will be resolution 18-3-5 to create one FTE accounts payable administrator position. Fiscal note. Anticipated wages and benefits based upon a step one for pay grade total seventy one thousand eight hundred and ninety four dollars. Motion by Hamilton, second by Bry. Discussion on this resolution. Any discussion? Please vote. Yeah. That resolution passed nineteen zero. Page 63 in your packet. Last resolution from the executive. Oh, we got another one underneath there. Oh, yeah, you do. Okay. Oops, I got a whole pile of them under there. Sorry about that. <laughs> On page 63, this will be 18, resolution 18-3-6, <laughs> to formally adopt the copyright liability prevention policy. Fiscal note, none. Motion by Hankel, second by Hamilton. Discussion on this resolution. Please, well, I'll get that up. All right, please vote. <clears throat> Again, that resolution passed 19-0. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself there when I saw the copyright liability prevention policy stuck in the middle of all those resolutions. We're at page 66 now, and that is, I don't know, resolution 1-7-something. One dash, seven dash something. <laughs> this will be resolution 18-3-7, to formally adopt the career advancement policy. This will note none. The monetary impact will be by department basis based on funds they have budgeted for employee training and education. Okay, motion by Rosar, second by Fire. Discussion on this resolution. Any discussion? Supervisor Clendenny. Mr. Chairman, I, I did vote for this to come out of the executive committee because I think it should be settled. I think this is the same resolution, the same program that went on December 12th to the uh, department heads meeting. And in there, it was 15 to 5 not to approve of this because it, it, it allows for advanced education. And that's not what they said. Uh, I, I, I was just amazed at the people that did get up and speak and was actually speaking for the taxpayers, saying, I, I, I don't think taxpayers in Wood County should be paying for somebody's bachelor degree or degree and then move on. And I know this, the tributes to that, they gotta work here so many years. But that's what brought this whole resolution. And I say if this passes today, I think we can, I think this is gonna allow us to go back and pay the individuals that asked for it before and didn't get it to now get it. So I, I am voting against this and I, I would hope many of you would. Further discussion? Supervisor Agurai, Witch and Hamilton. <laughs> said that anybody that gets a four-year degree will probably make a million dollars more than somebody without it. If that's the case, the investment in education is a really good investment. And we as taxpayers should not be paying for those degrees. There's all kinds of sources out there for them to get their degree. There's a, a grants, scholarships, uh, it's a relation that's been in the service, they get their education paid for after they get out of the service, etc. I don't think we as Wood County taxpayers should be paying to advance somebody's degree. Thank you. Supervisor Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have the one question. This goes from now, starting from here, forward. Correct. It does not go for anything backwards, correct? Correct. That's going to be noted in the minutes too, please? If we can. So. The resolution already says that. It says it. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. I'll go to Supervisor Wagner, then to Rosa. I was just going to confirm on this one. I think the only way that anybody could get that would be by a, a, a vote, a majority vote of the county board. You would have to come back here if they asked for something retroactive. So it, it, it wouldn't happen. 
Supervisor Rosar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just going to stand in support. I know there's been a lot of discussion, and I'm not going to rehash all of that. But I think that we need to look at this from a recruitment and retention perspective. And jobs are going to become more competitive as the years go by. And I think that investing in our employees is a good thing. And we want the best and the brightest. We want to be a place that employs people and then treats them well. So I'm looking at this resolution more of as a retention, recruitment kind of thing where we can show as Wood County that we are willing to invest in the employees and then keep them here. And I was very supportive of making sure that we got work out of them if we, if we helped them with some tuition reimbursement. And so I stand in support of this resolution. Um, not a lot of money, but I think it shows a good faith effort in investing in our employees for the future. For the discussion, Supervisor Hayden. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support this resolution. When you look at the demographics of our county and our state, we are going to have jobs and not enough people. It makes a lot of sense to improve the value of our employees and have them available for promotion within the county instead of trying to go out and recruit somebody from somewhere else. We have seen quite a bit of difficulty in bringing people to Wood County to fill some positions. The more we train and bring along our own people, the more likely it is that we will have an excellent candidate for positions within our own staff. Further discussion? Any further discussion? No, I'll get back to that. I'm just making sure I'm anybody else in the first go around. Supervisor Klein. Thank you, Mr. General. Question was asked: will, will this come back for money that was not paid out? Yeah, yes, it can. Any, anything can happen here, especially what, what might happen here today. To think that this went on for three years and it was brought to the county board and by a unanimous vote we voted this down. Now, why why would you vote any other way now? Because the same thing would happen. We would give somebody a eight thousand, nine thousand dollar education. For what? So I'm voting no, and please vote no. Any further discussion? Further discussion? All right, please vote. Committee meeting of February 22nd. That's page 86 and 7. 
<coughs> the Health and Human Services Committee meeting of March 1st at 88. The Board of Directors of North Central Community Action at 89, 90, <coughs> and 91. Health Department's monthly report, 92, 3, 4, and 5. Veteran Service Officers Report on 96 and 97. <coughs> Services Department Report beginning with Director of Ruins on page 98 and running through page 106, 98 through 106. Any questions there? Okay, page 107, the Wednesday, February 28th, minutes of the Conservation, Education, and Economic Development Committee. That's 107. Same committee, Wednesday, March 7th, pages 108 through 111. 108 through 111. <coughs> Page 112 begins the Golden Sands Resource Conservation Development Council uh, minutes, their personnel. Personnel and Finance Committee meeting minutes of January 18th and 112, and there are various committees and board uh, packet runs through 120. Any questions on that? Pages 112 through 120. 112 through 120. Page 121, uh, Land and Water Conservation Department monthly report. That's 121 through 125. UW Extensions Report, beginning on 126 through 129. 26 to 129. Planning and Zoning's Monthly Report, beginning with Jason Gruberg's uh, 130 through 134. The CWEB Board of Directors Meeting, uh, January 17th at 135. Six, Seven and eight. Um, City of Marshfield memorandum to the uh, seed committee at 139 and 140. <coughs> Gets me through all those reports. And now we're to the minutes of the Judicial and Legislative Committee meeting of March 2nd on page 177. Eight, nine, and their attendance list at 180. The Security Committee uh, minutes for February 13th at 181. Wood County Criminal Justice Task Force minutes for December 6th at 182. Billy? Just Supervisor Hank, oh, sorry about that. We're trying really hard. <laughs> too fast? Yes, too fast. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Let's go back. Did you have a question on one of those? I just sorry, when I get to the report parts, I tend to go up bunch those. Sorry about that. I'll go back to anything you want, though. No questions? <laughs> Usually when I see heads out, and I keep moving back. <laughs> we had an ask her. All right, the Wood County Criminal Justice Task Force minutes of December 6th on 182 and 183. Um, the Child Support Agency report on 184. Court Council's <laughs> monthly briefing letter on 185, followed by notice of injury and claim on 186. The court Council then has a pretty thick packet, uh, beginning with his memorandum <laughs> on 187, and some background information on some pending litigation that runs all the way through page 210. So, 187 is the memorandum. The information regarding that litigation goes through page 210. Not seen enough heads nodding yet. Are we ready to go? All right. <laughs> Still some questions there? No? Okay. Um, page 211, um, another memorandum from Court Counsel Kastenholz. Um, and that's using correspondence and reports on the agenda. It's really well written. That's 211 and 212. The Central Sands Group Meeting Minutes uh, from Monday, February 19th on 213 and 214. 
uh, Marathon County's metallic mining ordinance, the public hearing those. <laughs> 19 speakers apparently at that event on 2000, or 2000, page 215 and 216. Uh, Supervisor Layton, I'm having a hard time. I think it's here. You're going too fast to get um, back, to, I think it's 217. Okay. Oh, I just want 215. So, yeah, 215. Are we on Central Sands Groundwater Group? Is that where we are? I can back up a little bit. 213, 214. I just wanted to share with my fellow supervisors, we had a meeting yesterday, and the seed committee had kind of taken us to task as far as uh, paying a, a facilitator now that Peter Manley has left the employment of the county board or the county. So we were tasked with the job of bringing stakeholders um, to our meetings. And in the past month, we've really worked hard at that. Yesterday, we had, well, his nickname is Jams Jensen from Sand Valley. He's, uh, I think best you could describe him as an agronomist. We had Kevin Kubza from the, from a lawn care group, um, sprinkler system, stay green. What we're looking to do in the months ahead, uh, next month, a cranberry grower. Uh, we talked about a biologist. Nathan, one of the farmers from our Central Sands group, um, wants to bring somebody from Discovery Farms. In May, we're looking out as far as, as speakers. Um, we'd like to visit a large potato and vegetable growers operation and then have him speak to us about um, agriculture in the Central Sands. So just to reassure our seed folks that we're trying really hard to involve stakeholders and um, and our new facilitator, Rick Kovka, uh, President of Reggie, is doing a fantastic job. So I want to reassure you we're, we're hard at task here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, so that was the 213 and 214. And then the metallic mining ordinance, public hearing minutes, were 215 and 216. Before I get to the resolution on 217, are we, because apparently I did go too fast, are we, because everybody said, are we all caught up on the stuff before that, before we get to this yeah. resolution? Anybody have any questions that need to be asked? So, Mr. Rosario, do you have a question? Well, I do have a question, but it's going to go back a whole lot further than just the past recent. So, we can finish, and then if I could have the floor, please, to address something that we need to address, just so I can ask for a point of order, please. Why don't we do that before we do the resolution? <clears throat> okay, so I'm trying to find the um, executive committee, but on page 87, there was a March 1st, and I will try to find that as so I can reference it right away, on page 87, and I was sitting here looking for that, thinking, what in the world happened? Uh, we had a special Health and Human Services Committee meeting on March the 1st to open the bids for Edgewater Haven. And at that meeting, agenda number five was to pass a resolution to um, support, no, that's not it. Anyway, I can't find it. I'm sorry. To support some extra money to pay for the HVAC. And somehow that resolution did not get into the packet. And I don't know if we can do anything about it right now, but um, it, I, I cannot. Brendan, I can't find it. it it's, I think it's right. Is it page eight? Page nine. Of the page nine. So I guess I'm wondering why that didn't get in the packet and um, if we can do anything about it now because it's actually referenced in two separate sets of minutes, the Health and Human Services Committee and the Executive Committee. And I guess I just thought it would get in there from the clerk's office and we weren't thorough enough about going. Can you explain what happened? It's not in the packet. It's not. <laughs> and, and, well, yeah, that, that's a foregone conclusion. I guess my question is why. It's not. I, that, you would have to ask your the departments because we don't go looking for stuff. If it's not in the slot, it doesn't get run. Um, okay, so it just. We don't know what's coming. We don't have, I mean, we just expect the departments. I was actually just handed that resolution this morning, so I have that for. 
I have it in front right. of me now. Well, I'm glad you do. Don't lose it, please, because I need to address it in the future. I think the pressure. <laughs> OK. So I, even though that resolution is in hand, and it's mentioned in two of the minutes, the point of order is we can't do anything about it at this meeting because the resolution is not in the packet. Be considered. Be considered. Can I just ask for a point yeah, of order? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, technically, we're not talking about a point of order. Um, we are talking about the uh, application of the stat. 6590 sub 5 says that you have to move money by two thirds vote if that's what you're going to do. And so, what you're wondering is if you could make a motion from the floor, because it wouldn't be in violation of the open meetings law since you've got it on the agenda, to, to do that at this point in time. And um, I've never done that before, but I don't see a problem with doing it as long as. <coughs> Can become an opinion. Um, sorry, I wasn't supposed to say that. Just thinking it. Um, I think that if you go ahead and make that motion from the floor and bring the resolution next month to ratify it, if in fact you need the money there, that would be the best way to go. Um, normally, you don't have to have a resolution unless the statutes require it. And I don't recall that that statute, I don't have it with me, um, says a resolution. It doesn't say an ordinance because that wouldn't be appropriate. Um, so I think you could do a motion along those lines. I think you could have Trent um, read off what the now therefore provision is there, and then someone could move to make that a motion from the floor, and then you'd simply need two-thirds majority vote to then go ahead and approve it. And then if that's not enough, then I'll bring something back in writing next month to have you ratify it. Let me go to Supervisor Clendenin. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Why can't we? Those in the majority vote just vote to reconsider the resolution and have, add that to an amendment and see how the amendment goes to the resolution. We, we're going to reconsider it all. We consider it. Which resolution? Where would we be reconsidering? The, the one that we did pass mm -hmm. uh, unanimously, as a matter of fact, for. our committee. The one that was before us, correct? No, it no, wasn't. Yeah, 41. 41. Yeah. Uh, may I have that resolution a minute? And I can go ahead and make a motion. Would you like me to read the resolution? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, we've got, yeah. Well, I, I want to make sure we do this right, Peter. He's fired. I see, okay, yes. I'm okay. I'm not going to get Okay, so this is what the resolution states. I'll read the whole thing, so sit back. Uh, intent and synopsis, to amend the 2018 capital budget for Edgewater Haven for the purpose of funding the capital purchase necessary to replace the HVAC system on 300 Hall North. Fiscal note, to transfer $41,867 from avail available balance and contingency to Edgewater Haven Capital Projects Building Improvements Function. At the time of this request, the funds available in contingency are $529,677. The adjustment to the budget totals $41,867. I'll read the whereas so everybody knows what it's about, if that's okay with the board. Please. Okay. Whereas, the water has experienced inadequate temperatures in their 300 North Wing resident hallway. And, whereas, to be able to provide adequate resident comfort and continue compliance with state and federal regulations, and whereas the funding was not included in the 2018 capital improvement budget, and whereas the 300 hall resident rooms will be under construction in the second quarter of 2018, and this work could be completed concurrently without disruption or displacement of current residents, and whereas Rule 26 of the Lake County Board of Supervisors states that an amendment to the budget is required any time the actual cost will exceed the budget at the function level, and whereas the budget for the contingency account was adopted for the purpose of funding unanticipated expenditures, and therefore be it resolved to amend the Wood County budget for 2018 to transfer $41,867 from the contingency account to the Edgewater Capital Projects Building Improvement Function, and be it further resolved that pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 6590 sub 5, the county clerk is directed to publish a class one notice of this budget change within 10 days. It does require a two-thirds vote. 
So is that your motion? I think it's my motion, Mr. Well, Chairman. And, and the second to the motion is Supervisor Hamilton. He had his hand up first. And then it gets me to discussion. Supervisors are full. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're only in support of the HVAC system. We're only not in support of moving this way. Uh, I just think it involves a little bit of a slippery slope. And uh, I think resolutions, whether they're needed or not, should come through proper channels. Uh, we kind of messed up here, but let's bring her back next month and I'll be glad to vote for it. It should be noted that, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, this resolution was signed by six members of the Health and Human Services Committee and four members of the Executive Committee. Supervisor Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just reiterate what Supervisor Zerbu said. I, I probably would support this motion. In fact, I, I'm sure I would, but I think that it's important that we go through the proper channels and do this correctly. Everyone has the time to examine the resolution. Supervisor Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was actually at the uh, consenting vote at Health and Human Services. Uh, I was dissenting. On, yeah, dissenting. <laughs> I was on dissenting vote uh, at Health and Human Services. Um, and my reason is not that I'm necessarily against the HVAC or against Edgewater Haven, but I was uncomfortable with what we were doing. Uh, we had a plan in the uh, CCAP, uh, and I wanted to continue moving forward with the original plan. Uh, but I would echo uh, my colleague. I'm uncomfortable <laughs> with the way we're doing this today, and I would be voting against that because of the method. Thank you. Well, I just. Let me go through everybody for one time here. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Supervisor, are there any rest? He's kind of looking like he's ready to go there. Um, I'm kind of weighing in something here. I would make a motion to table this to the next meeting. I'll second. I have a motion to. It's that to postpone until the next meeting. It's tables an inappropriate motion, so it's postponed to attend up until the next meeting and a second by Supervisor Fisher at that motion. Is that a debatable motion, Peter? I my card in front of me. No, it is, yes. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Well. Supervisor Fire? Is there, oops, sorry. Is there a timing issue on this for, well, for construction? Is there a, a problem with holding it up for another month? Well, I would, uh, I'm sorry. Supervisor Rosa, go ahead. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Um, the timing's not perfect. If we, uh, uh, who are you pointing to? Ruben. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the timing's not perfect, and Ruben certainly has more details, and I would <clears throat> like to, I do not know what is wrong with my voice today. <clears throat> I would um, personally like to say I cannot believe that we did not pick up and, uh, you know, it was, it, it, there was enough blame to go around because enough of us looked at this packet. Um, <laughs> but we did go through the proper channels. We took it to the Health and Human Services Committee. We took it to the Executive Committee. It's just a matter of the resolution not making it into the packet. And so I know by the letter of the law, perhaps the process was not, but common sense says that we did follow the proper procedures. We're just not popping this resolution up without it having been discussed by two, um, by two committees. So with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to ask you to possibly recognize Ruben so he can talk a little bit about what this will do to the construction timeline. Since we've gone this far into the weeds. <laughs> you know, as I sit up here, it kind of reminds me of Peter. We're all going to set a jail. We give a memorandum to the board. I'm not cheating. <laughs> what needs to be noticed, what doesn't need to be noticed, and how we can hold it. So I get it. Ruben, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the timing, it could get a little bit challenging. That's not a certainty. It looks like this week there will be construction beginning on the 300 wing. That's the first wing in Edgewater that has to be completed before we begin kind of this musical chairs of moving one wing to another. So if this project is delayed or the decision is delayed for a month, it could stretch out that construction phase for the 300 wing. It doesn't take it off the table, certainly. 
Um, if, if this is delayed until next month, we will do our best to accommodate however we can. Uh, it could delay that some, but it's, again, it, as you guys decide, we will do our best. Okay, so the motion on the floor right now is the motion to postpone to the next meeting. Is there further discussion on that particular issue? Motion to postpone. All right. I'm going to ask Trent to put the board in voting. All right, so the motion, a yes vote is to postpone, and no vote is to continue on. A yes vote is to postpone. That passed 11 and 8. So what I'm hearing from the floor is there's a, probably the genuine want to get this passed. We'll get this in the packet and we'll get it before the board properly knows. Now that's not my, my concern too is it, I, directly in regard to the information that Peter put forth in one of his memorandums is what might the public be interested in and what, what level of spending is this. So um, we'll proceed that way. Thank you. Page 217. In your hand. Oh, does anybody else want to go back anywhere? <laughs> Pretty far. <laughs> All right, we're good? All right, page 217 of the packet of resolution from the Judicial and Legislative Committee. And Trent, if you please read the resolution. This will be resolution 18-3-9 to amend the county board rules so as to provide that committees elect their own chairpersons. Fiscal note, none. Okay. Motion by Clendenning, second by Lightnum. Discussion. Any discussion? Supervisor Lightman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, of course, a former civics teacher speaking here. The second whereas talks about this being by far the most democratic and egalitarian method of, of uh, appointing county committee chairs. Um, you know, the people I work with over the past four years, I have tremendous respect for. They're intelligent, hardworking. My point is going to be this. I'm going to vote for this. Um, we know when, when we sit with each other for two years or four years or six years, we know who the most active members of our committee are, the most able, the most organized, the most fair, the most respected. This is a job we can do. We county board members can elect our own chairs. It, it's the democratic thing to do. I'd ask you to change <coughs> me in voting for this. Further discussion. Further discussion. Or Supervisor Wagner. I sometimes don't catch you on the corner of my eye there, so I don't know. I have to play quickly over here and everyone will be seen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I rise in opposition to this. I, I oppose this every time it has been brought up in legislative judiciary, which has been many times, has been tabled several times. And uh, I have made the argument there, and, I, and I'm going to make the argument again today that there, the environment we are allowed to work in by the state statute says that we can have one of three things. We can have a county executive, we can have a county administrator, or we can have a county administrative coordinator. Again and again and again, this board, and especially the Legislative Judiciary Committee, has talked about not have, or talked against having a county administrator. They have always said, this system works just fine, that we have a county administrative coordinator who is responsible for uh, overseeing all the administrative functions of the county. And we, as a uh, county board, have decided, and it's been that way for 12 years, we have decided that that county administrative coordinator is our county board chairperson. Basically, we elect that county board chairperson every two years. We elect that person on the basis of his, or maybe someday it'll be of her, ability to uh, their vision of the, of the county, of where they want to take the county and how they want the county to, to progress. And they, we want to know that they have an understanding of the administrative functions of the county so that they can effectively do the duties of an administrative coordinator. In order to do that, we have five standing committees. We have five standing committees. And those committees have 
by, again, by legislation, administrative and legislative authority over the, over the committees they oversee. <coughs> if we elect a county board chairman because of his or her vision and his or her ability to run the county administratively, then we must also depend upon that administrative coordinator slash county board chairman to have the wisdom and the intelligence to select people who will know, know what they're doing to have oversight of that committee. I, 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 I can't remember, seen the minutes of some years ago, you, you'll remember some of the old timers on the board, Mike, uh, <laughs> but remember that uh, uh, years ago, we used to have a informal rule that the county board chairmanship would alternate between the north end of the county and the south end of the county. Twelve years ago, we quit that. But before we did that, there's a set of minutes where one of our county supervisors at the reorganization committee, uh, uh, the reorganization meeting of the county board, stood up and excoriated the county board chairman for not, not putting the most qualified person in charge of the health committee. You know who that was? Donna Rosar, Supervisor Rosar. They, they said, here you have a nurse, and you didn't even put her on that committee. That is the kind of thing that we've seen over and over again, that the, it is incumbent upon the chairman for his or her success to appoint people to, to head up the committees that have the expertise and the, the background to make sure that those committees are run efficiently and they fit into the vision of the county board. We have a president, we elect a president of the United States, and we trust him or, <laughs> yeah, we trust him. Well, we used to trust him uh, to, uh, to appoint competent people to the county. We have to have that same kind of trust in our county board. So if you don't like the way it's being run, if you don't like the people who are being appointed, appoint an elected other county board chair. That's the answer. I don't think this is the way to do this. And I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your time. Supervisor Ziffler first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, being in my 40th year as a high school sports official, I want to just use an analogy of baseball that the manager puts his players in the best position to win the game. And I uh, fully intend to vote against this resolution because I think you've done a pretty good job of that over the past few years, and I see no reason to change it now. Um, it also, no way is safe from staying away from uh, special favors here and there, but I think if the committees are gonna assign their chairs, there's gonna be a lot more of that special favor stuff. That was pretty rampant when you had 38 members on this county board. I yield the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Clendenin. <laughs> of course, I'm both in, in favor of this resolution, and, and 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 I'm that culprit that brought it up that the county board chairman did not appoint Donna Rosar. Uh, by the way, I was not the chairman who was excoriated. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get to that. It was your uncle. <laughs> He was related, wasn't he? No, and, and 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 she did get appointed. She did get appointed. Although I got taken to the woodshed for it because my, my understanding was is that if, when it comes to appointments such as uh, committee chairs and committees, you, you can only have a reason to vote against that or to talk against that because of a conflict of interest. And I did feel there was a conflict of interest. This particular county board chair did not like this Rosa, so that's why. And if I, I guess if you think this is a game of football or basketball or whatever you want, go ahead and vote for it if that's the way they do it when they play games. Thanks. Further discussion? Further discussion? Okay, I don't see further discussion. So yes, for the committees. Electing and no vote is continues on the same path we're on right now. So <coughs> that being said, and no further discussion, I'd ask you to please vote. The resolution passed 10-9. 10-9.
10 9. So the resolution passes 10 9. Okay, page 219 in your packet. Got that recorded? Yeah. Oh, I'm just waiting for the ones I get yelled at. Here's too fast. Okay. Okay. All right, page 219 is the minutes of the Highway Infrastructure and Recreation Committee. It's 219, 20, 21, and 22. <coughs> the Parks Construction Supervisor Report begins with the numerous reports from that department on 223, 223, and goes through 231, 223, through 231. Did we get there? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going on paper. It goes a little bit quicker, so sorry about that. Then 232, uh, minutes of the Aging Disability Resource Center of Central Wisconsin, their Finance Committee minutes of January 11th, uh, their board minutes uh, of the same date on 234, 5, and Doug, please. Supervisor Mahan, sorry about that. Thank, thank you. I, I wasn't sure if you were here, but <laughs> yeah. thank you, Mike, for prompting me. Uh, I would just like to take a moment to announce that the ADRC, after a very hard <laughs> process, has uh, selected the new executive director. Yesterday was her first job. It is, her name is Jonette Arms. She is from Milwaukee County. She is coming to us very with great qualifications and. Uh, I think we'll, you'll enjoy meeting her, and I think she'll do a great job running our ADRC. Uh, I plan on taking her around to the county board. She'll be here shortly, probably after the elections, to uh, meet the county board members, and you can get acquainted with her. Uh, as I said, yesterday was the first day I'm going to meet with her immediately following this, this county board meeting, uh, and I'm sure that you will find her expertise uh, very invigorating for the ADRC. We look forward to great things from her. What's her name? Uh, Jonette Arms. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Mahan. All right, page 236 in the packet is uh, the South Central Library System Board of Trustees minutes of January 25th, and that's 236, 237, and 238. And then that brings us to the last resolution in the packet. Before I have the clerk read this, I have to give a little bit of background on this. Um, the Public Safety Committee has been talking about this for a while. Uh, didn't end up in a form on the agenda where it could be brought before the county board. There wasn't time for an executive committee meeting. A number of years ago, we adjusted the salaries of elected officials in this county. One of those that was not handled at that, that time was the coroner's position. Uh, a resolution was brought forward to that committee to move that to a full-time job, and compensation was in excess of $100,000 to do that. Uh, at that point in time, there was no uh, nobody in favor at that committee of moving it to that level. But there was committee consent. Uh, cons uh, there was a majority of people who said that we ought to look at this and we ought to do something. We didn't have time to do anything before this needs to be published, the salary, by the April 15th deadline prior to taking out papers to run for those positions. So the only way to bring this to the floor with for consideration in, in any way whatsoever was for me to bring it and consult it with Peter uh, to put it out there. I'm not out here in any amount. I'm not out here uh, asking to do anything particular, but to bring it to the floor for debate and consideration and then make the decision if there is any increase that is wanted or not. So with that said, I would ask Trent to please read the resolution. This will be resolution 18-3-10. To increase the compensation of the Wood County Coroner for the next term of office beginning on January 7th, 2019. Fiscal note, the coroner currently receives $2.43 an hour for a 40-hour week and is paid $85 per diem for each call and is, and is reimbursed expenses. Okay, you've heard the reading of the resolution. Uh, do I have a motion to get this on the floor and then begin that process? By fire, second by zero flu. Um, and then Mr. Fire has told me he'd like to speak to this. So we'll start to start. Yeah, we, we as a committee have this, uh, had a discussion about this. For quite a while we've talked about the coroner. A couple of years ago we, did, we looked, 
we looked at a medical examiner. Well, you look at a medical examiner, they run anywhere from 75 to 100 to 120,000, depending upon if you can get one or if you can group up with a couple counties that have one. And uh, then we decided that we would, we would probably have to look at some compensation. But the last two years ago, we missed the boat. Like you said, we couldn't get it. And if it isn't done by before they file papers, we can't increase the wages of the uh, current uh, coroner. Our current coroner makes, uh, she's uh, paid $85 call a fixed rate. And she's uh, quite to my figures. It wasn't 420, it wasn't two something, it was 486. And some of the numbers that we had got from her, I don't know which one of those numbers is correct. The one that we have is two hundred two dollars and eighty eighty five cents, and the other one was four eighty six. I'm um, advocating that we would raise the eighty five call fix rate to one hundred fifteen dollars a call, and the hourly rate to eight dollars, and that, that equates to about a ten thousand dollar increase. So I would I would put that on the floor as a motion for a discussion. Okay, we have a motion to increase the per team on that to $115, um, the hourly rate to $8 per hour. I had a motion by Supervisor Fighter and I have a second by Supervisor Hamilton, I believe. And then from there we will go to discussion or amendment, amendment or anything else we have to do to get this moving forward. Supervisor, can I get your hand next? No, no, I was thought I was seconding. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> Supervisor Lynch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, as a matter of explanation, explain why you have this email here from Peter Gassimow. So, the chairman and myself talked about it last night. What happened at our meeting is that we had decided to bring it back next month. So I called Peter and asked for an explanation of the job applications for the corner. And I also called finance to get the last 10 years of the budget. So I just wanted to explain why that was on your desk and it's just for your information. immediately on reading this resolution and it seems to me uh, and I, I'm, I'm not here nor there on it I just need some things clarified uh, it seems like the math may be somewhat skewed here uh, number one if the justification part of the justification of this resolution is that there's increasing work in, num in number of calls so it, 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 it makes sense to me that if that's the case, at $85 per diem, if you have more calls, you're going to collect more $85, which essentially raises your salary. Secondly, is the $2.43 an hour per 40-hour week? My first question is, does the coroner work 40 hours a week? I don't know. We haven't established that. Secondly, if you're doing the math on what the, the total cost of the coroner's salary was last year and divide it by a 40-hour week, whether she works or not, you come up with a 243, so that number can be misleading. Mm -hmm. So I need, to, I need to have some clarification here uh, because it seems to me that the problem takes care of itself, itself if there's an increasing number of calls at $85, $85 <coughs> per diem, which I think is pretty, pretty generous per diem. You're taking care of the salary. We're not in the business of making a coroner a 40-hour a week position if we don't need it. I'm not saying we do or don't, but I'm saying I think the math may be skewed, and I need some justification. Thank you. Supervisor Flandetti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since uh, the timeliness of this was important because to get it done before the 15th, why is the timeliness the timing on this now does something have to be done before the election and and can this be sent back to the committee with a proper resolution no yes I no it can't no well, oh, it has to be published prior to oh okay thank you, thank you. Thank you. and other than calling a special county board meeting um, this was the only way to handle that you know does anybody care if I say something? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told you. You know, this might address Supervisor Mahan's question a little bit than the other. If we break this down, and I don't know if we have to have this reflected as an hourly wage, as opposed to just a base okay. number. But basically speaking, the corner makes $5,000 a year in base pay. Now, whether you're actually out or not, I think we all know that the, the level of work has increased significantly in the amount of reports that have to be filed and how they're filed and how they're done. 
as we've broken this down over the years, no matter what number you come up with, 243, 260, it's about five grand a year. I think the easier way to look at this, and, and to Supervisor Mahan's point, is the per diem rate actually takes care of itself to some extent, although sometimes they're out there for maybe 10 or 12 hours. The easier way might be to state this as the base pay for the coroner is $10,000 a year, plus the current per diem. It's currently at five, you know, it's currently at 5,000, maybe it goes to 10. I'm just throwing this out, there's an easier way to look at it. Or maybe it's 15,000 and keep the current per diems. But I think when I sat in that meeting, I really thought that $5,000 a year um, with the per diems and a total compensation in the corner of around $22,000 when it's somebody who, for all practical purposes, is on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and if they send a deputy, is probably not adequate. The re that was the reason this was brought forth. So, Peter, I guess my question is, can this be stated as something as simple as the base rate of pay for the, or the corner salary is $10,000 per year plus per week. Does that simplify that a little bit? <clears throat> okay, let's, let's work from that perspective and see where we might end up. So we'll continue the conversation. Supervisor Clendenin. Does the number of deputies decrease with this, or do we still keep the number of deputies? I mean, the per diem goes to their deputies also. The per diem goes to deputies. That's why I might suggest, I know we have a motion on the floor. It's a little unusual, but um, that was, I guess, my suggestion for not messing with the per diems. Per diems remain the same, change the base pay to reflect, I think, what they're looking to get to, or what I think might be fair compensation, which would also require an amendment to the to the amendment. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Or maybe we just clean it up. But right now we're kind of in a discussion phase, so I'm going to allow a lot of latitude in the city. Supervisor Rosa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm looking at this county comparison salary breakdown, which goes kind of back to something that Supervisor Mahan was talking about, because you've got full-time base salaries here, and if, it's my understanding that elected officials really would never ever have to show up for work if they really didn't want to. I mean, they are elected, and we've had this discussion many times that you know they don't punch a clock. They're not really. They kind of do their own thing. So um, when you've got a base salary for a coroner, I, I mean, for a county comparison, I assume this is all coroners. You look at that, and holy moly, Toledo! I mean, we're at twenty-three thousand, um, which is really inequitable compared to what the other populations are, and uh, we're under the part-time column, which I assume then um, means that that's not full-time. Okay. Um, I, I agree with you 100% that probably the base salary ought to go up, but I'm looking at these other figures and thinking, well, what should that base salary be? We've got a population of you know, just over 73,000 with a uh, total salary far below what these other salaries are, but again, there's a, a d differentiation there between full-time and part-time. So I think Supervisor Mahan's question is, um, is a good one. Um, my question is, is you're <laughs> suggesting 10000 as a base salary, is that an appropriate number? Or should that go up? I don't know. I just threw that out there as an easier way to look at this than messing with the means yes. and the hourly rate we talk about it as a base. So you're right, my hat ends are blue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think part of the part of the uh, discrepancy between the counties also that has to come up is that some of those counties have medical examiners, not oh, coroners, okay. and I think that's a big difference in the salary range. Uh, if Mike or anyone else wants to make uh, an amendment or to this resolution for a ten thousand dollar base salary with the present for being on support, thank you. Supervisor so Zerfu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I ended up right around thirty-five thousand dollars in yearly compensation, uh, but I did nothing with the uh, per diems because, like Doug said, that's kind of a you know you get more calls, you make more money. However, I did bring it, the uh, office up to the minimum wage, based it on the usual twenty-eighty hours, and came up with a little over fifteen thousand dollars. 
and you add those together on what the calls by uh, uh, the coroner for our public safety meeting, and I came up with a total reimbursement of thirty-five thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. So, so to simplify this, you're looking at about a ten thousand dollar increase. Yes. To the current base, even though it was based on an hour. Correct. So you're looking at basing this from a $5,000 number to a $15,000 number, which is a $10,000. That is correct. Okay, so that's another number that's been thrown out there in the social Thank media you, discussion. Mm -hmm. Trying to look at the number of heads they have nodding, but shaken. You know, at some point in time, a medical examiner is not a forensic pathologist. And we could at some point move to a medical examiner and have certain qualifications where it isn't purely an elected position, but we don't have the opportunity to do this during this particular time frame. I think it's something that we will continue to work on going forward. Uh, supervisors are approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I forgot to add that. I'm a little bit prejudiced in this regard because 22 years as chief of police, uh, I work hand in hand, not often, thank God, but with the coroner's office. And you can rest assured when you face civil litigation, the two areas it's probably going to come from is the sheriff's department or the coroner's office. And uh, she, uh, the daughter, is also responsible for her deputies. She's responsible for the, the whole administration of the department. So I do not think the $10,000 figure increases out of line at all. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Today we have a motion on the floor. I have to deal with or amend that. Um, Supervisor Rosa. So, um, so I guess I was asking exactly what is the motion on the floor right now, <laughs> and then I'm willing to amend that, but I have to hear. Uh, let me go back. Okay. I know the motion becomes a priority. <laughs> Mike wants to rescind the motion. I can rescind the motion. I'm good with that. We're sort of back to okay. square one. Do that out for discussion. Right. So all right, Donna, okay. right now we're discussing what that base wage would be. <laughs> Okay, so I will make a motion that the base salary for our coroner goes up to $15,000. The per diem stays the same at $85. And then there was an hourly thing? No, 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 no I didn't no, think no, so. No, so that's what my motion is, that the base salary goes up to $15,000 and the per diem stays the same at $85 a call. Okay, I, Mr. Fire wants to second that, I believe. That comes out the same way. Comes out the same, same way, way, just makes it similar. It just makes it similar. That was my question for Peter, if it needed to be expressed in an hourly wage or not. So, all right, so the, the current motion is to increase the in base wage by $10,000 to $5,000 to $15,000. The motion in a second, that's what we are discussing. Is there any discussion on that? Any further discussion on that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if you go to the email that uh, I have from Peter Castanol, I'm surprised myself. But anyway, uh, it appears to me that there's a possibility we could change how we the coroner function. And I referred to an article that was in the paper the other day from an Oshkosh home, and it says that the Adams County Sheriff's Department Emergency Personnel Department, I'm not going to use the person's name, declared her uh, individual dead at the scene. And to my knowledge, what we're doing here in Wood County is anytime there's a death, say a car accident, the body can't be moved until the coroner gets there and declares that person dead. My thought is that we have EMTs there, they're medically trained. They obviously would know that the person is dead or alive. No, it's statutory. No, no. But there is no statute that says they have to do that, from what we're seeing in the email. That's just food for thought on my behalf. I have no idea what the, what the actual rules and regular statutory requirements are. I'm just looking at the wage and what we're yes. paying the person. Does somebody want that question answered? No. No, it's time. I don't know. Um, it's up to the public safety committee. Um, who will be choosing their own chairman going forward can decide. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Any further discussion? <laughs> All right. I would ask you to please uh, let's vote on the board. All right. I'd ask you to please vote. And that resolution passed 18 to 1. 
Okay, now the resolution, that was the amendment. Now the resolution as it stands. Who made the motion on that? Um, fire reserve fluid. Okay, we had fire made the motion on the original resolution. We have to pass that. And reserve fluid is the second. Um, can we do that before I spoke since we're ready to do the other one? No. No? Okay. Go to the board and vote. <laughs> You're just approving the resolution and you just amended it. Motion on the resolution. It's kind of formality, but we need to be Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Oh, yeah. Oh, you stay. Motion to adjourn. Mike LaFontaine, Senator Hamilton. All in favor, signify by.